Good morning, everyone. My name is Herman Heimonen, and I'm a technical lead for co-design quantum computers at IQM. At IQM, we build quantum computers, but not just any quantum computers. We have a special interest in building application-specific co-design quantum computers, where we develop the hardware and the software together to optimize everything on our path towards quantum advantage on practical and valuable problems. In this talk, I will be presenting to you the hardware part of our latest manuscript on the archive, which details a, a co-design process. This talk is called a co-design star architecture superconducting chip. And this talk is a continuation of two other talks called simulating nanoscale NMR problems on a co-design quantum computer. These talks are the talks F40, 11, 12 in the room next door. Today, starting at 10.24 a.m. So if unlike me, you're not a time traveler, then I recommend you go see those talks in around one and a half hours. If however you are a time traveler, then it's best to go see those talks first because they will give you a lot of context for this talk. So this makes more sense to you then. But the conclusion from those talks is that a star architecture is an optimized chip topology for simulating nanoscale NMR problems. In this talk, I will present how we can realize this topology with a superconducting circuit. So your first attempt might be to use transmons. Transmons are by far the most mature qubit technology and are the bread and butter of superconducting qubits uh, at companies and research groups worldwide. If you try to connect them, uh, according to the graph on the right, in a star, you will encounter the problem that adding neighbors to the central transmon will increase its total capacitance and therefore decrease its charging energy, EC. If we want to keep the qubit's frequency constant, we need to compensate that by decreasing, sorry, increasing the Josephson energy, EJ. By doing that, we make the qubit less and less anharmonic. So we move away from the transmon regime and we, in the limit of large n, we will end up with a harmonic oscillator with a squid loop. Furthermore, qubits are small, so the center tends to get quite crowded if you want to couple many qubits to that. This increases the risk of unwanted couplings and crosstalk errors. So we want to find an alternative solution that allows us to avoid these problems. Our solution for a co-designed star architecture chip is to replace the central transmon by a resonator. This is the advantages that there is plenty of physical space to couple qubits to a resonator as they tend to be large objects. And resonators have lots of favorable properties such as having long coherence times, not having squid loops that subject you to noise, and they can be manufactured very precisely to a specific frequency. In our design here on the right, we have a lambda over four resonator where the right hand is shorted and the, where the right side is shorted and the left side is left open. So we have a quarter wave standing wave there where the voltage maximum is on the left side of the resonator. To this voltage maximum, we will couple capacitively qubits through tunable couplers. These, tun these qubits will be transmons themselves and the tunable couplers will also be transmons, but that are highly flux tunable so that we can turn on and off the interactions between the qubit and the resonator. This way we can choose which qubit resonator pair we want to act on at, a time, at each time, and we can avoid crosstalk issues. We believe that this architecture is scalable to several tens of qubits, simply by extending the resonator and going into higher modes such that we get more locations along the resonator where we can couple qubits. For co-design purposes, we have also added a quantum circuit refrigerator or QCR to the central resonator. This is because in the algorithm to simulate nanoscale NMR problems, we need resets as part of our quantum gate set. This is crucial for simulating the problem accurately. And in the spirit of building application specific hardware, we can now add a quantum circuit, a QCR to reset the resonator state. So now you might ask, Hermann, you just said you want a star architecture chip with a qubit in the middle, but this is a resonator. We can't use a resonator as a qubit, right? So here's how we're going to do it. So 
we cannot drive the resonator directly because then we would populate the higher states. But we can use it indirectly. So we, initial, we start by initializing all the qubits and the resonators in the ground state. We then designate one qubit as the central qubit. So here on the slide, I have chosen the bottom right qubit to be called, to be given the name central qubit. We then prepare an arbitrary state in the central qubit with our driveline. And after that, we send a flux pulse to the coupler in order to perform an I swap gate between the qubit and the resonator 01 subspace. This way we can move now the arbitrary qubit state from the qubit into the resonator. We can then perform control Z gates, CZ gates between the resonator and all the other qubits, again, by using the couplers. Once we're done with that, we either reset the resonator using the QCR or send the state back into the central qubit using another I swap gate. Once we've done that, we can now designate another qubit to be the central qubit and repeat the procedure. In this protocol, the I swap gate is used to transport the qubit state around the chip, while the CZ gate is the computational gate. That's what we're going to use in our algorithm as our two qubit gate. Now, you might ask, what? Can, can we actually do these gates between the 0, 1 subspace, the resonator, and the qubit? Can we really stick to that subspace, or will we excite higher states? So in simulation, we can simulate the system of transmon, a coupler, and a harmonic oscillator with lots of states. And we can compute the gate fidelities for these gates. So here, what you're seeing are the error landscapes for the I swap gate on the left and the control Z gate on the right. The red dashed line denotes the 99% fidelity uh, contour, and the black dashed line is the 99.5% fidelity contour. This is for system parameters for a state-of-the-art device with 60 microsecond T1 and T2 times, and capacitances that we can get for, for um, the quite directly with, with the technology that already exists. More details you can find in our archive manuscript, but this shows us that we can do gates between the qubit and the zero one subject of the resonator to similar fidelity as between two transmons. Actually, the fidelity is even a little bit higher, but since this is looking at one pair, I believe the conclusion we should draw and it's a similar fidelity. So we can actually do these gates to the same, we can do these gates just as well as with regular technology. So, in conclusion, a star architecture chip has a high connectivity and it minimizes the swaps needed for simulating nanoscale NMR problems. It's not particularly practical to build a star architecture using regular transmon technology. So instead we place a central resonator that effectively acts as a qubit through the operating protocol we, I just showed you. The gate fidelities between the qubit and the resonator are similar to the gate fidelities between transmons. So we believe this is really a working solution that creates this new, top, new qubit topology. Future research questions are how far can we push this? How many qubits can we couple to the central resonator? And can we enable direct couplings between two qubits instead of going via the resonator? That would that would have advantages and that we can further remove I swap gates. But these gates, they need to be just as, high, just as high fidelity and just as fast as the gates we can do directly. Here on the right, we have a list of my co-authors and I strongly recommend you go see the talks by Manuel and Mario on the theoretical side of this co-design project where we explain how this hardware concept came about. And all the details are of course also found in our archive manuscript. Furthermore, I would like to advertise that we are hiring in all of our locations in Finland, Germany, Spain, and France. So if you want to work with superconducting qubits and building, building and selling real quantum computers, uh, this is a great opportunity. We're always looking out for quantum experts, be that in quantum algorithms, in hardware design, hardware testing, uh, microwave engineering, software engineering, uh, hardware fabrication, and so on and so forth. So please have a look at our website, meetiqm.com for that. We're also arranging a conference called the Superconducting Qubits and Algorithms Conference 
here in Helsinki in Finland at the end of August. Uh, the website is sqa-conference.org. And I really believe that's the place to be if you're interested in quantum computing with superconducting circuits. We'll have some great talks lined up for that. And we're accepting abstract for the next month and a half. So have a look at the website and see if you can make it. So thank you very much for your attention. And I look forward to your questions and starting discussions with you.